Hey everyone, I'm here looking at this picture of me posing with a Nintendo Switch. Haha. -ha. And the purpose of this project is to recreate a Coles Phillips style illustration. So Coles Phillips was an illustrator around the turn of the century and he just had a phenomenal sense of not only um, you know realistic rendering and all those classical art skills, but also just a really strong sense of negative space and graphic design. He always had these uh, gestalt examples where one thing would blend into another. So we don't need a specific line here for the car. We're able to figure it out, even though it blends into the background. We're able to figure out where her dress is based on really clever hints. And it just had this really strong feeling to it. Uh, I think you can see the descendant of this in things like the iPhone commercials where blocked out people are dancing and a lot of other arenas. Look at this chair. Is it a chair? Are there stripes? Or is it the background? So now we're gonna recreate that here in uh, Photoshop. And I think we're gonna end up having something like three colors total. We're gonna have this red of my shirt, this blue from my pants. That's gonna match the Nintendo Switch uh, red and blue. Um, this black for the background. And that's also probably gonna be something where I black out the ground in it. <coughs> and then this sort of mortar color. You can barely see it there. And also some sort of default white, which is going to replace areas of my shoe. And also the mortar color is probably gonna be the bottom of my shoes. And also my shirt and this sort of um, classic hoodie design of the zipper and the strings. So uh, how do we go about this? Well, I think there's a couple things we should start with, which is this is just an image. We can fix a small uh, couple of things on. Notice that it's slightly tilted. We can make that more formal and symmetrical. And I'm going to start by just dragging down some guides. Guides are something that you get from the rulers. Where do you get the rulers? Man, it's hard being new to Photoshop. View rulers is where you can turn the rulers on or use control R. And when you have that, you can click on the ruler and drag down and get these sort of guides. If you're hovering over them with other tools, I think you can hold control to get your cursor to change and then you can move them again. You can also go to win, uh, view clear guides if you start to hate them. And you can also turn on snapping to them. So sometimes selection tools or brush tools will end up uh, glomming onto there. So having done that, I'm now going to first transform this image. I'm going to hold control T or select all. And I can't transform it because it's the background image. So I forgot. First, we're going to take this off of background. Double click on the word background for this layer. Many times JPEGs and photos start off on background. And all you have to do is double click them and then you can turn them into a regular layer. The only difference is that the background is locked for everything. I guess you could also just turn the lock off there. Now having done that, now when I hit Control T, that's the same as going Edit, Transform, Free Transform. There it is, Edit, Free Transform. So control T brings up this, and this is how we can take a layer and scale it or move it around in various ways. And by the way, all those other transform modes, if you right click or command, uh, control click on a Mac, you can still get to them. Uh, things like flip horizontal scale, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, control T, <coughs> and now I'm going to rotate and I'm going to rotate. And at some point, I end up right around there. That looks pretty flat and even to me. And I'll hit enter. Now I also don't need a lot of this other stuff, so I'm actually going to crop this image and I'll hold Option or Alt on your keyboard and that's going to make it so that it transforms the, uh, the crop identically. So I'll go to around there. Somewhere you can see the fireplace and enjoy it, but not get overpowered by it. About there? That looks good. Maybe one more crop. Now I don't want uh, necessarily need this top area as much, so I'll crop that down. Around here. And as for this bottom area, how do I get rid of that? Well, there is a way. I can uh, click this and invert it with Control I. So I control clicked on my layer, which loaded the layer as a selection. I then used control shift I, which is the same as using select invert 
to get the opposite of that. And I now wanna make sure that I've got all those extra pixels so that there's a little bit of overlap for where I'm gonna do this next trick. Select, modify, expand. I'll just expand it five. Of course, there's other ways you could do this. You could always just use the lasso tool and poly lasso your way to having that just as easy. You could instead use the wand tool and select anything that's transparent pixels. There's always like three to five ways to do them in Photoshop and none of them are the wrong way. Um, if it's faster, then it's good. If it's more accurate to what you wanted, then it's good. So you have to use a little bit of everything to get there. So same thing, select, modify, expand. Now again, why am I doing this? I'm gonna fill this now with content-aware fill. What content-aware fill does, it you can find it under edit, content-aware fill, but what a, wa a waste of time doing that. You should use the fill tool for this. Shift F5 is the hotkey for the fill tool. There's also control backspace, no wait, alt backspace, no. Shift backspace, yeah, shift backspace. And the fill tool in general has basically lots and lots of ways that you can fill up a selection with stuff. You could choose your foreground color, which would be this white. You could choose background color, which would be that black. If I chose color, I could select specific color. Uh, in this case, I'm going to content aware fill, which is the same as going edit content aware fill, but we have a hotkey for it here. And what this does is it's going to try and use AI to figure out what here on my you know child stained carpet is similar to the selection that I'm making and then fill it in. So when I do that, uh, you might have an error here with the shoe. Yeah, a little bit of error there, just like I thought would happen. And that's the sort of thing where I can just, I don't know, paint it out. It's gonna disappear once we fill this up with Cole's Phillips stuff, so I don't have to worry too much about it. So now, how would I start going about this project? Well, let's start with um, selecting big groups of colors. Now this is a slightly older version of Photoshop and so I don't have the new object select tool but I do have the quick select tool. The quick select tool is a brush based interface so you'll notice that I can use the bracket keys just like on the brush to make it bigger or smaller and if you paint over an area it's usually pretty good at figuring out what you wanted. Of course there's some things that you don't want. And so you can hold Alt or Option and subtract them. Now that did a pretty good job, but you'll notice that it didn't do a perfect job. So I might use the Lasso tool. I switched uh, the Lasso tool with L or Shift L to toggle between them. And I can just add a few clicks. Or what about uh, all these little uh, curly hue things? Maybe I want those still. Well, I can hit, uh, one way I could do that is I could switch to the quick mask tool, frantically search for my Wacom pen. All right, screw it. I'll paint with a brush. So I could use a brush. Just a tiny little brush. Yeah, this will be fine. And I can use shift to click along. And with shift, it will go from your first click to the next. So I can do things like paint in some of these little fringes. I thought they were kind of a cool touch. Real sort of Game Boy color sort of ad you'd see in an old school comic book. cool guy with his video game. Don't worry about painting over like that. Oh no, what happened guys? I painted too far. Because what you can do is switch to the other color, black, and just paint away.
Same thing up here. I can have that knee smoothed out by you know, overpainting a little bit and then fixing it. So there's my blue selection. Maybe a little less here. So a lot of times what you do is I end up with this workflow of um, black first. Where'd my brush go? Lost my train of thought. And again, we're going to be editing this a little bit. So we can, I mean, because this is a graphic statement, I can do obvious editorializing where maybe I want this shoe to be a little smoother on its tongue as it goes there. I switch to the lasso tool and I'll just, actually, never mind. I'm going to go out of the quick mask tool. And I'll use the lasso tool to just subtract this from my selection. The other thing I might do is then why not add color range to this? Man, that didn't work. The old school magic wand tends to have a lot of problems mostly on fringe stuff like this. So you shift click along here to get all that. I'm just using X to switch between foreground and background color. Yeah, that's good enough. So now I can turn this into a single layer. I mean, the just to start with, the basic way to do this that would be very brute force and very damaging would just color pick the blue you want now and hit Alt Delete and fill with that color. I'm going to hide my selection with Control H. And you can start to see the graphic statement here. But there's some problems with this. Uh, for one thing, um, that was very destructive. And for another thing, what happens if you then realize you didn't have the right selection? Like now that I zoom in here, like this line here, it got a little bit of the shadow. And so that's an example of where you would want a separate layer. So I could create another layer and then fill with the blue. And then I might subtract from it with the erase tool on this area that I missed. But that's still not as uh, non-destructive as we could be because I could also do this as a layer mask. So what if instead I filled this layer with this mask here, this little button down here is the layer mask tool. And never mind, wrong one, this one. And that's going to create a layer mask that's attached to this. And now I could just fill this entire layer with blue. And now on the mask, part of the layer. I could do things like delete stuff that I don't want. Oops. I could also change the color here. Ooh, crazy pants. Of course, I can get even further than this by using a different layer type. So what if instead of that, I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to control click on this hidden mask, and that's going to load that old selection I made. So I can go a step further and add a specific kind of layer called a solid color. So this button here is your various layer types. This is always going to default to a pixel-based, raster-based paint layer. This button is instead going to offer very different kinds of layer layers. And the one I want is solid color. This is going to fill the layer with a single color. 
And not only is that going to reduce the file size because it doesn't have to remember each individual pixel, uh, but it also makes it easier to just change on the fly. And I can get that exact blue that I like. Now for something like my shirt, let's do the red layer next. Select color range. And I'm just going to color pick on this red. And then I'll hold shift and click and add other reds to it. I went a little far. That looks pretty good. And I can increase the decrease the fuzziness until around there. Now there's a lot of problems here, but I can fix it. So one thing I could do is where I'm having these shadow problems, I could use shift click to add a couple extra selections here. This photo was taken in it late at night and therefore it has all sorts of problems where I didn't have enough light and I figured, you know, we're just messing around at this stage. I don't need to go and get out a full lighting equipment set up. So there's a lot of noise in the photo as a result. And that's causing some of these little artifacts of selection. And I can subtract from my selection as well. I could also use Q and see this. Now you might uh, find it kind of hard to figure out uh, which one you're looking at here. So sometimes I think uh, I have my preferences changed right now so that it has a green mask. I can change this back to the default red. And normally I think this is an exact reason of why I usually don't use red, or I might change it depending on the circumstance. I can't really see it on a red sweatshirt when I switch it to red. So maybe I can choose something like dark blue. And it's just way, it's that three step process that I mentioned in class, which is step one, you get the correct view. Step two, get the correct tool, um, selection and step three do a thing um, it's very hard with a red mask to see what we're looking at so you end up having to change it I'm going to switch to the layer tool or the lasso tool get some of these other little leftovers and here I can see there's a lot of stuff that I actually need to get rid of The older I get, the more I just like hand painting my selections. As barbaric as that sounds. Now this is also an example of why you would want separate layers for your things. What if I get to this point and I filled it in with red and then I realized I did it wrong? I would have to panic and be like, oh no! I have to fix this. But instead, I can just apply this as, oh sure, let's use another solid color. 
Solid color of red. And look, this is filled up with errors. There's um that. Now I think I can option or alt click on a mask and that will load it as my current channel, which means I can directly paint on where I want these things to be or not be. So for instance, now I could very quickly just go in and paint these off. Why not just entirely redo that Nintendo Switch? So a lot of this stuff, a real easy problem to solve. I know I don't want it in this picture, right? Other stuff I can solve with levels. So that's all kind of in the middle grays enough that I know I can just suck them out with the levels tool. Now I'm going to alt click on that again and now it's off. What about adding the red from the Nintendo Switch here? Select color range. Select color range. You had to be on the right layer for that. I'll just add some of these colors together. And I just end up, you know, when you're starting off, quick mask is your enemy. And you're just constantly turning off, uh, turning it on or off, and then you can't actually see what you're doing. But the old, the longer you use Photoshop, the more it actually becomes your friend because it's just something that you can do all the time to like view your content. So having made that selection. Subtract. I'm going to switch to the marquee tool with M and use minus to get that little chunk off. And then I'll add it to select the, the red layer by clicking on this and filling it with alt delete. No, control delete. Yeah, that sounds right. How about the how about the bricks? That's a tough one. Well, I think I'm going to start with this background and the white of my shirt because I think that's a layer that I can do pretty easy. Um, first, I'm going to do another solid color, which is going to be white. And I'm going to click on the mask of this and invert it with Control I. That means the mask is entirely black and therefore none of this white is showing up. So instead of uh, the way I was working, I'm instead going to um, invert the selection on the layer that already exists as I make it. So to start with, I'll switch to the lasso tool. And this one I like just because it's real easy. I know I want like the walls to be white. And maybe even a little more graphically interesting. And I'll invert that. Do the same thing over here.
go back to make sure I'm on the right thing and I'll invert. So that's filling this mask with white in those areas now. Quick select tool. If you're on the newer version, you can just use object select. I'm going to try and select out this red. And you know what? Why try to get this all in one go? Switch tools. Oops. I'm going to add, subtract from my selection there. I think that's like the number one thing that beginners do wrong in Photoshop is they try the quick selection tool and it got them 90% of the way there and then they decide to round that down to an F selection. It was an A minus selection. You just need a little bit of extra selecting to get over the hump. Let's just invert that on that layer. And I'm actually going to paint on this um, layer mask for the the cords of my jacket here because it's very easy to do. So I'm going to switch to a brush. I think this is the hard round brush. It's just the default starter. And I'm going to click here. Oh, I'm going to switch my color to white with X. You can also color pick off of this. Um, and now I'm painting on this mask. I'm going to hold shift while I go and it's going to draw from one click to the next which is really nice. So a lot of times if you have like really linear elements, you can just get stuff like that really fast using this. A little bigger for for knots. about the rim of my shoe. Select color range. Oops, gotta be on the right layer. Select color range. I really like selecting by color range. I'd probably do it too much. That looks pretty good. And I'm actually going to use that just to paint. So I'm going to switch to the brush tool. And with my color set to white, I'll just paint along the area that I know it worked. No, it's not working. Actually, you know, another way to do this would probably be the quick select to, uh, tool. Select the shoe and the outer shoe, and then subtract the inner shoe.
So now I've switched to the mask tool. I mean, I think that, you know, the thing to take away from here, like I'm kind of showing you five tools at once and never seem satisfied with any of them. And that's like the fun of Photoshop and the truth of it is it really is kind of a stream of conscience, uh, stream of consciousness flow where you don't necessarily have one tool that gets everything done, but you also don't mind that. Invert. Why did my shoe? Now, this is a really ugly edge, right? So we can adjust that with a much more elegant tool, which is the pen tool. And the pen tool is something that you use for vector drawing. And it's got its own UI that is kind of in the future. But what I like about it is it's also something that you can get nice soft edges. So you click and drag out. So I click and that creates a bezier and then I can modify them by control clicking on them. So when I control click, when I control click, it'll temporarily change to the arrow. And it lets me draw out nice, even, soft curves. I can hold Alt, and it'll change to the Vector Change tool, which means I can close that Bezier. Do something like that. Make selection. So then what you do is you right click and you make selection from that. And the result is you get a nice, clean selection. I can invert that. I'm just using a brush tool to click in these circles. Then your pa uh, that path I drew with there, that tool was now stored over here, which I can just delete. Now I need the black layer and the tan layer. I think the tan layer first. Select coloring. Now this is going to give me a lot of stuff. Uh, one thing I think is kind of interesting though is at this point. I can create a selection out of the other selections pretty good. So the tan layer is going to be mostly pretty far back. So let's create a new solid color. And as for the solid color, let's just choose this brick color. Well, that's not the color I want. That's the layer. I'll delete this other one. Just seem to be connected to the path. And look at that. These other layers on top of it kind of got it 90% of the way there. So at this point, maybe I could even just subtract from this stuff. Or alternatively, paint stuff in. Or put the black layer on top of it. I don't know. There's so many ways. Uh, let's do that. I'm going to duplicate this layer by control, clicking, and dragging it down. Note that I clicked on the layer thumbnail, not the mask thumbnail. And I'm going to modify this one to be black on top of it. And the black layer, let me see. I 
think I want the floor to be black. So I can select all that and select the mask and delete. All right, remember it. I need a little bit of outcropping here. So I'll use Shift L to select that. And note that when I'm in the lasso tool, I can hold Shift and it'll draw in straight lines. Alt backspace or Alt delete to fill. Well, it's starting to look right. Now notice that within the white layer, I kind of have a lot of stuff that is already there helping me. So to some extent I can start off with that as my selection. What if I invert my selection with control shift I? And so now that has some of this stuff selected. And now I can paint, uh, number one, I could paint away on the black layer. Yeah, there we go. To get rid of all this shoe stuff. Oh no, I went outside the line. Just color back in. So I'm switching between black and white. Black and white, I oftentimes use as erase and unerase in this mask based pipeline. So X to switch back and forth as I correct these errors. So I need to erase on this layer now. And this one, because I can rely on the blue in front of it, I just want to double check where this is. I can kind of just erase based on this line here. Notice that because the blue layer is on top, I'm not being as scared because I know it's just gonna, I'll have this blue layer sitting on top of whatever I'm doing with these under layers. And so I don't have to worry about it. Right, let's see if this works. So I simultaneously have to erase the black selection from here. And then I, I need that layer turned off. Now we're starting to get somewhere with this. You can see way up here. Uh, some of the stuff still remaining might be just having my hands and feet show up, which means to, um, I guess in this case, I could erase it from the things that it are above it, or alternatively, I can have a version of this on top that has my face and legs already started. And I think I wanna do that, because I wanna make sure I don't end up with a bunch of spare pixels coming in from layers that I missed where they overlapped. So I'm gonna duplicate this by dragging it down to the plus sign, and I'll move it up to my top layer. I can imagine these as just stacks of paper. And why not just select that? In fact, I can right here just switch over to the mask tool. This has the opposite mask problem. So I'll double click on the mask button and change it back to the default red. And I'll get a really tiny brush. And I'll just shift click along here for this little strand of cool ripped pants look. Maybe I overdid it. So I'll use another brush to subtract a little bit off the edge there. So 
So that is flesh that I want to keep. Don't shoot your photos at night like I did. Just go outside with natural daylight. And I'll just get such a nice exposure that way. Oh no. Ah, I was looking at this hand and I was worried I didn't add to my selection for a chunk. So that looks good. The other knee looks good. Here's the quick select tool set to plus. Just get this little chunk here. You've been painting a little bit. And now lastly, the face. using the magnetic or the polygonal lasso now to subtract from selection and I just double click whenever I want to close that out or you can hit enter and that'll do it and stuff like this hair That'd probably be a good place for channel selection. We'll get back to that. Let's start by actually getting a mask on this. So I'll throw this on as a mask, and that takes it down to just this. Oh. <laughs> That's one on black that I need, which is I need Nintendo Switch actually selected here. Now this is a simple rectangular shape, right? So that's a case where the clear winner to me is usually um, the polygonal lasso. Of course, I keep finding all these places where I reach to the old tool and there's totally a better one nowadays. Cutting my thumb off. So when I do that, I see problems. That's a place where I can go over here actually to the black one and I'm just painting with the paintbrush on that mask to bring this back in and as for that area that's something that I'm going to paint back in on this layer Now a lot of these areas where it's like um, something like that, you can start off by selecting uh, one layer. So here I've control clicked on the mask for the red layer, which selects this sort of red area around the Nintendo Switch. So you can continue to paint on these to make it even stronger. Um, but I could invert the selection with Control Shift I, 
And so now I can use that to actually paint all these buttons in really fast. Same thing for the blue layer. Select it, Control Shift I to select the area that's not blue, and I'll paint that in for the black layer. Nice flat blacks. And I think the only thing left is a couple of these um, areas where uh, the mortar shows through. And what I can do is I can reduce the opacity of these layers temporarily so that I can actually see what I'm looking at. So I hit V for the move tool. And I selected that layer and I went, I hit five to reduce its opacity to 50%. Uh, and then I'm going to select the black layer and do the same thing. And the benefit of this is a couple things. Number one, I can just quickly see areas where I want to add black. And number two, I don't know. It's good to check the composite image. So let's start with the mortar. And that's something where I'm going to just use the brush tool and simplify it into a couple of clicks. So I'm clicking over here. I click one time and then I hold shift click and it paints across the whole thing. Actually, I can go even more formal. Control Z multiple times to go backwards in space. I can also hold shift while doing this. And so I click first and then I hold shift and then it paints in a straight line. So this is very good for things that are on some sort of grid system. I noticed that I painted across the whole thing, because guess what? It's easier to just paint off of the tiny area that I overlapped on than it is to, you know, finic be finicky about the whole thing. And I'm hoping I get some nice sort of, yeah, some nice sort of blending with the Nintendo Switch and these lines. It'd be so much easier in Illustrator, but whatever. So having done that, I can now start erasing some of this. I sat in front of my fireplace specifically because it had this formal very, very Coles Phillips design sense to me of pointing towards me. For the fireplace, let's actually use an elliptical marquee. Just drag that until it looks right. You can also use select transform selection and that won't modify the um, the layer at all it'll just modify the selection I'm gonna choose free transform and now you have to hold shift to break the transformation I think so if I want to move this unequally I can do it with the shift key and that way I can put the top of this directly at the top bottom directly at the bottom Now I can hit the uh, enter to apply that. M for marquee tool. I'm gonna sh hit shift M for marquee tool, pardon me, so that I switch back to the rectangular marquee. Add some more of this in, and then subtract some of it out. And hey, we got a fireplace.
I don't know if the brush tool is the right thing to be doing here. It seems very un Photoshop from like a photography perspective. You know, my painterly bad habits just make me like that sort of Bruce sentiment. I don't want to do this dumb single stroke for everything, so I'm going to create a new layer because that sounds way better. And on this layer, it's also going to be filled with black. I'm going to click and drag down for one series of mortar, right? And now I'm going to hit the V tool uh, for a move tool. And now I can clone these out by um, holding Alt and Shift. Alt will start cloning it. So notice that if I just click on it, it's moving that layer around. If I hold Alt down, it'll clone a new one out. I can then hold shift and it'll con uh, clone it um, constrained to one axis. So having done that, let's merge all these. I can hit control E to merge this top layer with the layer below it. Or I could shift click on the layer palette to select multiple layers and merge them. Most of this is going to be subtracted out, so I can modify it to fit what I think is the most interesting placement. So for instance, I don't want this so close to my head. I can artistically control for that. I'll move it over a little bit. that one little chunk. So this is actually going back to that brute force method that I said was going to be bad at the start. But it's actually totally fine at this point. See like that one? I don't want that having such a weird intersection. I'm going to move it over here. And in fact, my coat here is making this weird tangent with the fireplace. So I'm actually going to go up to the red layer and select my mask. And use L, and I'm just going to artistically decide that I want a little more floomph there. I'm going to merge all these into one super layer. I'm using the marquee tool to select chunks of pixels and then just move them individually. I might also subtract from selection and move it. By the way, when you are on the marquee tool, you can temporarily switch to the move tool with control. And this way, if you have this selected, when you or if you have a selection made and you're using this, uh, you can still hold Alt to clone out pixels but it'll clone pixels rather than a new layer. So it's a little less destructive. And you don't have a million layers clogging your file system. And then lastly, I need this one here, but with the specific addition of forcing that cliff there. So that's pretty good, right? And that's sort of the idea behind this Cold Phil Coles Phillips project. Um, let me know if you have any more questions. I obviously didn't cover every tool ever, but hopefully I got you 90% of the way there. And you might run into problems like this where I don't even know what's happening. You know, 
sorry, that happened. I'll select that, hit Control L. There we are. There's probably one pixel of gray too dark on the selection. So I'll just up that levels and now it's fixed. And you know, that's kind of the Coles Phillips project. I hope this gives you some insight into some of the moving tools and some of the selection tools and also some of the organizational tools that you might want to employ here. Thanks.